Hey, Charts, we just wanted to have a kind of experimental type thing and come out with a video of more of a conversational style video before we embark upon this fast together. Man, I'm excited about fasting. Are you guys excited about fasting? Yeah, yeah. I love fasting. Yeah. Fasting it's is the best. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're joking, completely joking. Fast, joking. Fasting is not something, I said this Sunday, fasting is not something that you enjoy it yeah. all in the natural. Yeah. But man, we love, as a staff, we love the results <laughs> of fasting and what this is spiritually going to do yeah. for us. And really believe this is going to be a season of breakthrough. This is going to be a season of really, more importantly, just developing an intimate relationship yeah. with the person of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I cannot wait to see what God really does yeah. for this year because it's really kind of setting the stage up for the remainder of the year. Yeah. Uh, I've kind of said this even on Sunday or so at one point in another previous video uh, last week, but um, January is preparation for the remainder of the year. Yeah. Yeah. That is, sure. This January, this fast is setting ourselves up for the remainder of the year. I'm kind of coming into mindset personally of, uh, of that. So... Yeah. Uh, Let's talk about the spiritual side first yeah. of fasting. Uh, we'll have a conversation and then um, just talk about practical things after talk about some spiritual things because really why we're doing it is more 100%. of a spiritual side of it yeah, for definitely, sure. Definitely spiritual, spiritual side, side. Is, is the reason. So <laughs> in it for the diet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the spiritual significance of fasting. Uh, first, what gets you excited personally about fasting and mentally, spiritually, how are you approaching this fast. Yeah, I'll kick that one off. Um, so mentally, I actually, just like you had said, you know, January is the month of preparation and the rest of the year happens after that. I think, especially going into the new year, we all have these resolutions. Oh, Christmas is done. And here's the new year's. I got to figure out what to do on January 1st, right? Like yeah. you never have enough time. You come up with a list of things you want to change. And before you know it, you can't achieve any of them because it's just, it's outlandish, right? Yeah. yeah. So, like, for me, coming into it, being so busy as I am, it allows me to slow down, regain some clarity, realign. I like using that word, realign. Um, not just my thoughts personally, but with God's thoughts, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like he lays the plan out for me, like when we talk about the rest of the year. I just got to sit still and listen, right? Yeah. Um, so for me, mentally, <clears throat> the mental preparation coming into it, and even the physical preparation, um, it's got to happen before the actual start. Like, yeah, that's right. I, you got to start really um, coming to grips with what you're about to do. You know, right. When we talk about paying the cost, like we're going to pay the cost right. um, to see this process through. So for me, mentally, yeah. it's just it's, uh, it's a good reason to get some clarity and yeah. slow down a bit. Really. Yeah. No, it's good. Um, you know, some people like they they say, like, "Hey, I want to fast," and then the next day they hop into a fast, but they never really prepared themselves for what they're about to do, right? Yeah. Like, uh, I love the idea of fasting. Like, I do get excited about it when people are like, "Oh, fasting is so difficult." Like, I know it's difficult, but like I said, I, I kind of focus on that the what what the reaping of it is, uh, and so I get really excited about fasting. Um, but then like fasting comes and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so hard. <laughs> it's like day three, I'm like, I can't take this anymore. <laughs> like it's just, it's, it feels unbearable. And so I'm always like, why was I so excited about this? And right. my flesh kind of eats at me a little bit. But I think it's important, like we said, like to prepare yourself even mentally before you begin to prepare yourself spiritually before you begin to go to the Lord and say, Lord, how would you have me fast? What, what is what is a, a way that I can glorify your name? What is a way that you would see a sacrifice within me to grow closer to you? And, and we've talked about that, that, you know, fasting is not necessarily getting God's attention. It, it's it's giving him our attention. He, he We have his attention. Right? Right. We are the sons and daughters of him. Right. Like It's not fasting so that he'll see us and, right. and now he'll answer our prayer. Right. It's fasting so that we can give him our attention because yeah. it's in that moment that that we really begin to ex understand what he's doing in our lives. So we hear clearly what he's doing in our lives. So um, it's important. It's, it's, it's important to recognize knowing what you're going into that really you're, you're waiting on God. You're waiting yeah. to hear his voice. So you're waiting to hear his voice. Um, and I've always been comforted, you know, by the verse uh, in Isaiah chapter 40, where it says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Uh, and it's just a reminder to me that as we prepare ourselves, that 
we're, what we're really doing is we're strengthening ourselves by yeah. stopping. Like we, we get so caught up in running into the new year and running into everything that we have to do and running into our, our tasks and, and, and what we're going to accomplish this year and our goals. And it feels like what I love about starting in the year is like, man, really what we're called to do is just slow down. Like this is the point of the fast. Maybe not called, but we're, we're called, we're, we're meant to, to slow down, realign ourselves with him. Uh, and instead of running into the new year, man, just, Get down on your knees and enter the New Year's in prayer. Enter into this first month in prayer and submit it to Him. So I think that's kind of the mentality I go into it is shifting my focus that direction to yeah. prepare myself for uh, what the Lord's going to do and the waiting that's going to come through it. Right, because mm-hmm. fasting really should be a lifestyle yes. that we live. Yeah. I mean, Jesus said, when you pray, yeah. when you fast, it's a lifestyle response to God of denying our flesh. Yeah. And... Just giving it all to Him so that when things come along in our way, that we can really just walk in confidence in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, Because when we're trying to do things of our own ability, of our own might, it never works out, does it? (laughs) Um, Even Jesus Himself, He fasted for 40 days. So uh, Jesus, when He was baptized, He was filled with the Spirit. But then when He left 40 days of wilderness after being tempted um, by, by Satan, and uh, he overcame uh, what Satan was trying to do, quoting scripture. He had, yeah. he had scripture prepared, yeah. and he yeah. was able to quote back everything that, that Satan was throwing yeah. at him. Uh, and so I encourage you to even write down scripture and have in your back pocket ready to go yeah. when you're feeling weak, yeah. right, to encourage yourself. Right. But after he came out of that 40 days of fasting, and he was successful in that, he overcame uh, Satan. Uh, it says that he was filled <clears throat> with the Holy Spirit, and he walked into power. Like there's a there's a power that you walk in when you come out of a fast. There is a level of just because your relationship with God, there's a level of relationship with God that that steps up uh, that you didn't have before when you yeah. go through that. And even in the middle of the fast, you may not really feel like God is close. <laughs> it's a, it's a it practically it's you may yeah. not feel like man God just feels even more distant than he did before. But man, coming out of it, there is a spiritual. Uh, awakening, there is a closeness that you have after the fast. Yeah, I know I've experienced in my own life. Yeah, and the way I, I kind of love that how it's put is uh, Jensen Franklin has a book called uh, The Fasting Edge, where he really talks and breaks down fasting a little bit. But he gets this concept of the fasting edge by referencing it to like an axe, like that we kind of go through our lives and we kind of are swinging this axe and chopping at things and and chopping at things and chopping at things. And what we're doing while we're doing that is we're doling our axe. The more we rely on ourselves, the more, the more we try to strive and do every swing, every chop, we're doling it and doling it and doling it down. And he really talked about the fasting edge is really getting that edge back to your, to your axe. It's it's sharpening yourself. It's preparing yourself. And, and it's really based around this, this verse from Solomon writes in the wisest man. He says, uh, in Ecclesiastes 10, 10, he says, if the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. And that wisdom, it's sharpening your axe. It's sharpening the blade. It's like, if you want to get more done, if you're finding yourselves like, I don't have time for this. I, I'm so busy. I'm overwhelmed. There's so much going on in my life. Right. He's saying, stop <laughs> swinging with the dull axe. Sharpen yeah. it. Take this yeah. moment to stop. Take this moment to sharpen it. Because when you have that sharper blade, you'll be able to do so much more. And really what that's saying is when you're doing it with the Lord's strength, that there's going to be so much more fruit to it. That there's going to be so much more progress to it. Yep. And you're not relying on your own might or your own will or your own talents to oversee yep. it. And I think you could even say that disciples were swinging with a dull axe in Matthew chapter 17. Yeah. The demon-possessed boy who came <laughs> and they couldn't cast out the demon who was uh, oppressing and yeah. possessing that boy. And uh, Jesus came, cast the demon out of the boy and Jesus kind of pulls disciples off to the side as a teaching moment. He says, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. Yeah, yeah. The disciples were really swinging with a dull axe yeah. in that moment. And Jesus was saying, maybe you need to sharpen that axe uh, through fasting. Yeah. And then when you encounter a situation, when you encounter a problem, a lot of times we fast when we have a, a situation or a problem occur. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But if you live a lifestyle of prayer and fasting, maybe when a situation occurs, you can almost make a withdrawal from the bank you've already stored up yeah. because you've been fasting, because you've been abiding in God. You're already sharp. And then you're already sharp and you're able to, man, 
anything that comes along the way. Yeah. And I don't, I don't have to deal with that anymore. Yeah. Greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. Yeah. And you can walk in the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit, which yeah. is what Jesus did. No, that's good. I think, too, even speaking to that, like, when I, when I hear that story of, like, Jesus telling them to, that you weren't able to cast out the demon because uh, it comes through prayer and fasting, uh, you kind of look back and, and you maybe look at the story and you realize that the disciples up to that moment had likely cast out demons already. Like they had likely done this before. And that's why they were so shocked that at this moment they couldn't do that. Yeah. And it's, there's, there was a spiritual significance in that moment that they required that deeper connection, that deeper intimacy with the Lord to see a spiritual breakthrough take yeah. place. Uh, and I think it's important to recognize that because fasting, it really does. It allows breakthrough to happen in our yeah. lives. It allows breakthrough to happen in situations and what we're going through. Um, and even in Isaiah, you know, uh, he, he's speaking to Israel and the Lord's really just declaring through it what a fast looks like to him. And and I love how he says it, Isaiah 58, 6, he, he's talking about, uh, what a fast is, and it says, is, is not this the fast that I chose to loose the bonds of the wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. And it's he goes through all these different areas of what a fast looks like in that moment. Um, but it's just a reminder to me that if we're seeking a breakthrough in our life, that if we're struggling with areas of sin in our life, that fasting really allows us to break through those things. It's a it's an intimacy with the Lord. It's a clarity with the Lord to hear His voice that we can overcome some of those situations. And I don't know what you may be dealing with or what you're struggling with, or uh, maybe it's a, a mental issue, a, a sexual issue, maybe it's a, a physical issue that you really you just keep falling back into. And and I find in my life that man, when I fast, it's it's it, it reminds me of this verse here that there's a breakthrough that comes with it. That as a yeah. submitting of myself, a dying of my flesh that helps me overcome some of the sin in my life. Maybe it's maybe not something big. Maybe it's just something that you keep falling back to, but that fast allows you to bring the breakthrough. It allows there to be freedom, to be deliverance through that. And it's just, it's encouraging to me when I hear that and you hear Jesus reemphasize that, that the, the importance of fasting in your life to see a breakthrough. Yeah. That's good. I think too, like uh, for, for people who have never done this before, um, fasting is definitely an acquired taste, right? It, it, you're not going to come right off the gate and enjoy it. Um, yeah. You know, if, if first few times for me was just I tried to make it something that I wasn't, and it wasn't sure. enjoyable. Yeah. Um, but you do once you once you realize that there's it's the intimacy that you're after and the heart. Yeah. Oh man, you like you, you taste a little bit, and you're like, man, I want a little bit more. Right. You know, I want a little bit more. So God reveals Himself the deeper you go in and the more yeah. that you give. So. Yeah. Um, I love what. Uh, this in Daniel chapter ten verse two. So Daniel was doing the Daniel fast. Yeah, uh, eating Daniel. vegetables. <laughs> Daniel fast. <laughs> this is what we call yeah. Daniel fast. Uh, I do my uh, fast. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I'll do my own fast. Uh, do the Adam fast. <laughs> verse two. Uh, it says this. In those days, I Daniel was mourning, uh, fasting for three weeks. So twenty one days. Yeah. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Let's go down to verse 10 here. Suddenly a hand, an angel touched me, which made me tremble my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved. Hmm, like that stands out to me so much yeah. that because Daniel gave up pleasant food that the Lord was pleased with him. Yeah, And like when we're coming and we're giving up uh, the comfort of food or the comfort of pleasant food, whatever it might be, that God is pleased with us yeah, just coming right. and just being yes. with them out of relationship. And what happens in the unseen world is really tremendous because it goes down even further. Um, uh, it says, uh, so man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have uh, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. This is an angel, Daniel standing trembling. Verse thirteen. But the prince of, uh, of the kingdom of Persia withstood 
me 21 days, and behold, mm. Michael, one of the chief uh, princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the king of Persia. So there was a stronghold over that area, yeah. and there wasn't breakthrough until Daniel fasted, yeah. and he gave his his, his his body to the Lord. Yeah. Like There's something that happens when we give our physical self, including our body, to God, where yeah. there's breakthrough that happens, yeah. and there's an intimate relationship that happens. Yeah. I think this is so powerful, this picture of, of fasting. It's so good. I, I love that story, too, because there's a whole other element of what's going on. If you look at it, too, it's God releases... The blessing, the the breakthrough for Daniel on day one, <laughs> like yeah. it happens in the spiritual realm day yeah. one. But it was through his waiting, Daniel. Sorry, Daniel's waiting through that fast. Daniel continued to wait the twenty one days, although God was already moving. He couldn't see it. He continued to wait on the Lord, wait that's on the good. Lord, and give and give and sacrifice and sacrifice till he saw the breakthrough happen. Yeah. So that's really just significance of fasting that recognizing that. Man, there is a spiritual warfare taking place in the I mean, midst. What of a my vivid fat. picture of spiritual right. warfare. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> It's incredible. Like when you really realize what is happening in the unseen world, yeah, it yeah. really opens your eyes to the reason why we're fasting true. and the reason and what we're doing here <clears throat> and the authority that we really have when we're walking in that. Because, man, just as we mentioned earlier, Jesus walked in power. The Son of God fasted and prayed uh, for 40 days yeah. and was tempted in the desert. How much more should we as just yeah. his, his people, his children? Yeah, 100%. So good. Um, so let's go in. Let's just talk about some practical things with fasting. Okay, so um, uh, what's some practical tips to make fasting successful? You would say um, definitely come in with a plan. Yeah. You know, you know when you're you're looking for the snacks or whatever. I mean, don't just go into. It. You said this already. Don't just go into it not eating and not willing to pray. Yeah. For me. You know, I'll have a ton of books or um, some podcasts I want to listen to, um, some worship music, um, and I'll have a, like a designated place where I'd like to get away. Yeah. Um, just create a rhythm, really. Yeah. Um, becomes a discipline. Yeah. Um, so, have something. Don't just. It's really hard to hit something when you don't have a plan. Yeah, you know? that's true. Or where you don't have a target. So if you have backups to backups. Um, it, it it is easier, so you're not searching in those. Moments so, what kind too. of backups would you put in place um, for yourself? Like, what, what kind of things are you? So, like, you, uh, I'm actually practical. reading a book called uh, "Knowing God Through Fasting." So, that's one of the books, and then another yeah, one. Right. Reading about fasting. Before reading about fast. fasting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it energizes you a little bit for it. Yeah. Uh, another book on prayer called "Moving Mountains." Yeah. Um, and then, of course, scripture and, and the Bible reading plans that we have, and. Um, um, Just in those playlist. moments you're feeling, yeah. you're feeling weak or tempted to eat, whatever it might be, because you know you want to give this time to God. You've, You've already that prepared plan. yourself. Yeah. You've already had those scriptures and go, yeah. no, uh, whatever. I mean, whatever right, scripture right. you have, wow, that man does not live by bread alone, it, but yeah. by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Right. Like, that's, I mean, and you've taken that scripture and you posted it on all your bread loaves in the pantry and the cereal boxes. <laughs> right. and so every time you're tempted, you're like, oh, God, I remember. <laughs> but it, yeah. I, I mean, I went through a... a a longer period of time of fasting in my life and I saw more breakthrough in my life personally yeah. than I ever had in my life and every time I came to a place where I was like man I just want to eat right now I just went before the Lord and, yeah. I, and I prayed this prayer and I said God uh, more than I'm hungry for food yes. God I'm hungry yeah. for That's you good. more than I'm hungry for this physical food Lord I just want to know you yeah. and just that going prayer, in with <laughs> that <laughs> prayer kind of locked and loaded yeah. ready to go like it encourages your spirit to keep going, to not give in to uh, your flesh, but to say, man, I just want you, God. Yeah. This hurts right now. I've got a headache right now. This is a struggle, but yeah. man, Lord, I just but it's for you. want you. <laughs> yeah, right. I want you. Yeah. More than anything else in this world, I want you. Yeah, you're dying to yourself to show him that. And he, you know, said he recognizes that when Daniel does that. It's just, yeah. it's a, it's something that he sees in us, a, a, a sacrifice that we do. Um, but I would say just even also just on a practical tip is is, is find something that you can do. Like if yeah. like if you if you find yourself uh, failing, it, that's okay. Yeah. Start over. Like Start hey, over. like some people get into these twenty one day fasts and day three they eat something like oh forget it my fast is blown. But like right. get back into it. Like it is gonna be a sacrifice. It is gonna be hard. Start the next day. Start that moment and rededicate. Lord, 
I, forgive me for breaking my promise to you, but I'm going to re-engage in it right now. Right. And it's that's okay. It's okay. Don't I mean, just we, throw the towel on yeah, me. Yeah, right. I mean, keep my, going. It, your walk with Christ would have been over a long time ago if you gave, <laughs> <laughs> if you gave up the there first time. There is you grace. Said, yeah. Yeah, like, sure. get, keep going in the fast. Complete the 21 days. Like people right. give up at day 10, day 15, and say it's too much. Just day man. three when those headaches are coming. Yeah, going. keep going. Yeah. yeah. So just practically speaking, like, hey, if you're going into a water fast, liquid mm. fast whatever it might be, like I encourage you kind of start uh, weaning off the carbs yep. and the sugar because start breaking uh, those cravings now. just know <laughs> that on day three, day yeah. four, day five is really for what I've seen personally yep. are some of the most difficult days. But once you get past day four, uh, day five for some people, depending on who you are, what you've been eating, your yeah, diet's it's been so like, easy. it's just a lot easier. But diff- headaches are, are real on a fast. Yeah. And getting through that day three, day four uh, is a real is a real thing. It's important to know that <laughs> there's there's <laughs> yeah. toxins in your body yeah. and it is healthy because they're trying to get rid of it. So there's one practical tip too: drink plenty, 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 plenty oh, of, water, of water, like nearly a gallon a day. Yeah. Aim for a gallon and knowing that you may not hit that, but hey, you're not going to eat food. You're going to give it up or whatever it might be. Or maybe you're doing a Daniel fast or whatever else. So any more practical tips? I'll go yeah, through. Yeah, I, list I here. use that. Um, those meals. Those are great. Oh my yeah. gosh! I like yeah. add uh, some well, water vitamins, a little bit of sodium. <laughs> yeah. Um, just to give me a little bit of clarity. Yeah. Um, no, that's really good. Sodium really does yeah, help. Yeah, you gotta have that. It's muscle function. Like when you feel like, oh, I can't even lift this iPad. I'm, it's yeah it's affecting you. Yeah. I actually take uh, when I enter, but I'm on keto off and on. Yeah. Uh, but then too, when I do like a water fast or liquid fast, I'll take. Keto pills have sodium, magnesium in them. Oh, yeah, yeah, magnesium, yeah, magnesium yeah. too. My body needs that. To help that replenish what you're to, not getting. Yeah, yeah. Drinking plenty of water and because you, your your body's not able to absorb absorb yes. the water which yeah. you need without the sodium, magnesium. Really. Yep. Yeah, and I think some of you might I'm be no doctor. <laughs> some of you might be yeah, watching, but like, it just works. Yeah, some of you might be watching, but like, well, I'm not doing that type of fast. Like that sounds extreme, right. uh, and it's whatever fast is right for you. It's yep. and, and, and whatever you know the word as you pray and you seek them and say, well, what should I fast? Like when I mean, we mentioned this, but it's what would be? For everyone. It's yeah. different for everyone, and so but it's important that you do sacrifice. That you do sacrifice something to please the Lord to see that devotion. And and for some of you, it might be the Daniel fast, and we'll talk. About some of those fasts a little bit, um, but I would just say whatever it is, don't get too caught up in the legalities of it. Don't get too caught up in in stressing over, you yeah, know, is it this sure. or is that? You know, I love the Daniel fast. I think it's a great fast, uh, but I think the issue that I've seen and that I've even fell in the trap of is I become so like overwhelmed with the ingredients and like, oh, it's supposed to be all natural, but this says, is this okay? Am I breaking like? Just forget it. Don't don't, don't be stress. Re- right? Don't be religious about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, like don't be religious. Don't are be you sacrificing it. something in this moment? Like, right. are yeah. you eating uh, that vegetable? <laughs> you know, you're that bagged vegetable it. versus who cares? You're not eating the pasta. You've sacrificed something. Right. You know, you're what not I mean? doing it out of religion. You're That's doing right. it because you yeah. desire relationship with God yeah, and to right. hear his voice. And I've kind of instructed my kids, so maybe even like you bring your kids along in this. Yeah, we had a, a devotion okay. last night yeah. and uh, we were kind of reading through Luke chapter three and, and talking about where Jesus walked into the wilderness, like I shared earlier, and yeah. walked out full of power. Well, I was saying to them like, hey, I know you guys, my kids are giving up electronics, they're giving up yeah. video games, yeah. YouTube, all that stuff for, sure. for 21 days. Us as a family are giving it up together. Yeah. And I was encouraging them, this is gonna be a season where you hear kids you're going to begin to learn how to hear the voice of god and you're going to know clearly what he is saying and what he's speaking maybe you already feel like you know how to hear the voice of god that may be even clearer than whatever has been in your life through this fast but my desire for my kids and my prayer for them is they're going to know the voice of god through giving up electronics and doing that so as a practical tip man bring your entire family along with this because it holds you holds you accountable you're doing it together and spiritually speaking man it's yeah. building your kids up in their yeah. faith as well. It's a lot easier and, to do it with your family too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if, you're, if you're fasting something and everyone else is eating it, yeah. it's like this is awful. <laughs> in the way, in the way I approach it with yeah. my kids, I ask them like, "Hey, uh, do you want to do you want to know God on deeper levels? So good. Do yeah. you do you want to fast? I'm not telling you have to fast, right. Ruth and Caleb, yeah. but do you want to fast? Because right. I believe you're gonna if you say just like. Samuel said to, uh, to the Lord, speak for your servant is listening, instructed yeah, yeah. by Eli. Speak, God, for your servant is listening. You're going to hear the voice of God. Do you want to sacrifice this season and hear the voice of God? And I believe yeah. my kids are going to hear the voice of God like they never have before. They're yeah. praying for it and believing it. They're even going to be 
prophetic in nature. You oh, know, yeah, like, 100%. And uh, that's really what the Lord is doing, I believe, in our church. Amen. Um, so from a practical standpoint, bring your family along. Yeah, that's good. That's um, good point. Let me read through a couple, uh, a couple of the practic- practical tips very quickly. Uh, and then I'm going to go through types of fast. Uh, name your fast. Mm. You know, what do you, what do you believe in God for in your fast? Um, first off, make sure it's uh, first off about relationship with God. Yeah, and then yeah. what, what, what are you really going after? Two, uh, don't boast or get weird about it. You <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. if someone offers you a donut at work, oh my goodness, like <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't freak out. Just, just be, no, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, um, you have to talk about fasting. Like, don't be weird about it. Yeah. Number three, your flesh will be provoked during this time. You may be a little more grumpy yeah. or yeah, irritated. Sure. We call it hangry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> number four, be wise when you fast. If you're pregnant, don't fast. If you underlying medical condition, yeah. don't fast. Five, uh, keep going if you fail. Pastor Joey talked about this a little while ago. If you fail on the fast, just start over. Pick back up the next day. No big deal. Yeah. There is yeah. grace in that. Uh, number six, uh, God may actually feel distant during this yeah. time. True. But I promise you, at the end of the fast, he will seem even closer than he has before. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. during the fast, it might be difficult. That's part of the, the process in it. It's good. Anything to add to those? No, I think it's good. I think you uh, there. So six types of fast. Uh, I believe some people will be doing this fast. A water fast. Mm. Uh, this is what Jesus did. Elijah did. Moses did. A partial fast, uh, which is like the Daniel fast. Uh, you're really more a vegan. Uh, in nature, uh, you could just be skipping a meal a day too, like uh, yeah, fasting. Yeah. Uh, not skipping, but fasting. No, you're right. uh, a meal or two a day is a yeah. partial fast. I'm not giving up, up all my meal. Yeah, but well, you've you've created a, a season or a time of your day, that knowing that you're going to fast and spend intimacy with right. the Lord. When the moment. sun is yeah. up, you're not eating. But when the sun is down, yeah. you can eat. Yeah, but don't gorge. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> oh <my> <laughs> it's seven o'clock. Here we go. <laughs> all days Bring me all the pizza. Eat all three meals. The, uh, the fourth one, uh, let's say, uh, number three, uh, full fast, um, no water, no food. So Esther, the children of Israel, uh, did this yeah. for three days. Uh, only do that for three days. Uh, number four, uh, liquid fast, water, juice, tea, maybe even coffee. Um, uh, number five, married couples fast, for your fasting married couples things and number six uh corporate fast yeah, we as yeah. a church are coming together and we're doing this we're calling a corporate fast yeah and out of this we believe we're gonna see the power uh of jesus just really displayed uh in our corporate services which we always kind of say around here we pray that our corporate encounters with god lead to daily personal encounters right. because you're not having an encounter with god throughout the week then you're really missing the whole point yeah and right. we even said on sunday i said on sunday that hey if uh if you're not praying more having a personal encounter with God than you're really just dieting during this time. Yeah, yeah, true. So yeah. we're not about dieting. We're about personal relationship with Jesus and yeah. building that right No, it's so good. Yeah. Uh, I think there's so much truth to that, that like in this season, like, and I've seen it and I've done it in my own life, that we get so caught up about the fast, that we get so caught up about, and as, as I mentioned, the legalities of the fast, uh, that we really miss the point of why we're fasting, right? We miss the point of why we're getting intimate with the Lord. And so that's why some of those tips are important to remind you, why am I even doing this in this moment? Yep. Um, but then it should draw you to a time of spending time with the Lord to have those daily encounters with him, to be in prayer with him daily, that we're not just kind of, you know, fasting for the fasting sake. I, I would hope that you don't fast 21 days and never actually pray, right. <laughs> never actually yeah. open your word. Like Engage. you've accomplished nothing. <laughs> you've right. died at that point. So, uh, man, in this time, spend intimate time with the Lord. Every time you skip a meal, I think one of the great rule of thumbs is like, hey, if you're fasting a meal, replace that with reading the word, replace yeah. that with praying, like use that time that you would normally sat there. Like if you're at work and workplace, go sit in your car, go read the Bible, go, go spend time with the word and, and just use that moment of sacrifice to turn the attention towards him in that yeah. moment and to spend time in prayer. Um, because it's really, that's what's going to allow us to sharpen ourselves. That's what's going to allow us to, to see that breakthrough. It's going to allow us to overcome those things that we're trying to see the word move in our lives. Um, and there's this, this quote that I love, um, it's from Leonard Ravenhill and it's just really about the power of prayer um, and the maybe the lack of it in our own lives and maybe it would help drive you to engage in prayer a little bit more but uh, it's talking about Elijah and we know kind of the story of Elijah as he's praying uh, against the idols and Baal and really showing you know what God's going to do and how his God moves and responds to his prayers um, 
And so he, he's referencing this, and he says, to the question of where is the Lord God of Elijah, you know, sometimes we look at Elijah and go, yeah. man, what, God, why doesn't God answer prayers like he does that in Elijah's time? Um, you know, we answer, you know, where he's always been. He's always on the throne. He's always, he is who he's always been. Um, but the question really should be, where are the Elijahs at? You know, we know Elijah was a man uh, of passion like he was, a man of prayer that he was. Um, he's a man, he was a praying man that stood as a majority with God. Um, and it says today, uh, God is bypassing men, not because they are too ignorant, but because they are too self-sufficient. Brethren, our abilities and our handicaps and our talents are our stumbling blocks. And to me, that quote just reminds me that we do too much on our own might, that we do too yeah. much of our own ability. Uh, and that really, that if we want to be like the Elijah, that if we want to see God move, it's that complete sacrifice of self and that complete humility to walk into that prayer time and recognize that he is still the same God. He can still move in that same way, but it comes to that intimacy with him. It comes to that time of prayer with him. So don't make it just about the legality of, man, you know, I, I made sure I didn't eat this or I didn't eat that, but it's really about doing those things to die to yourself and to spend more time in prayer with him. Yeah. yeah. Humbling ourselves before the Lord so we can really just know him. Yeah. And um, a lot of stuff, man, I was having this conversation with my father last night, my dad, and we were just saying like everything really does, we're talking on the phone, everything really does come from just a healthy learning. I'm going off a tangent right now. I probably shouldn't have done this, but uh, learning and understanding the fear of the Lord in our life. Yeah. That when we really understand fear is not being fearful of God it's being fearful of not being in his presence. Yep. Yeah. It's being fearful of not being with the Holy Spirit. And that's why David said, uh, don't let your, your spirit depart from me. Don't let your right. spirit leave me. Like he, he had a healthy fear of God, not a fear is like, man, I'm scared of him, but a fear is like, I don't want to be without the presence of God in my yeah. life. And that's what we're really doing in, in this season. Is we're uh, just, man, we just won't desperately the presence of God. We're coming to Him in humility, yeah. coming in with a healthy fear, because we can't go, we can't move without His presence. Just as Moses, we say this a lot, just as Moses said, Lord, I will not move without Your presence from here. We are saying that right now. We're drawing a yeah. line in the sand. True. God, we are not going from this point without You, without Your presence. And so Lord, we come humbly before You, and we fast, That's and good. we pray, and we seek You. So, um, I'll have Pastor Joey here praying in a moment, but I want to remind you this Thursday night at the waiting room, we start our fast. Uh, there's a resource that you can get online at journeychurch.org backslash 21 days. Um, what else am I missing? Every single day, there will be a prayer that's posted in the morning um, that will go out. And we as a congregation, as a body, uh, just praying through uh, that prayer topic and, and prayer. And it's also in that in that uh, 21 day guide. Mm -hmm. And if you need help during this uh, during this time, just refer back to that at uh, journeychurch.org backslash 21 days. You might have picked up a physical copy here at the church as well. Yeah. Uh, was there anything I'm missing from any of that stuff? I think that's good. A little nugget about Sunday. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, if you've lasted this long in the video, make sure you're here uh, Sunday because we have a special guest. Uh, not special guest, but uh, the yeah. guest. Goes by the name the, Pastor Eric. The, the, <laughs> the guest yeah. of honor. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like yeah, a yeah, while. Yeah. Uh, the guest of honor, Pastor Eric, is going to be here. It's and gonna he's going to be here for just like five minutes or so. Yeah. But man, I cannot. I'm so excited that he's back. I am too. And he's going to be here. And, yeah. Um, well, let's pray. Yeah. Let's pray about this fast. Father, Lord, we just, God, yeah, we submit ourselves to you today, Father God. We. We humble ourselves before you, Father God. We even begin now to prepare our hearts, God, for what you're going to do in this season, God. We we prepare to wait on you, Father God. We prepare to uh, prepare just to, to sacrifice and die to our flesh, Father God, to maybe uh, Lord, fast a, a, a food category or a specific fast or a complete fast or a liquid fast, whatever it is, God, that you lay on our hearts, Father yes, God. God, whatever it is that you call us to, Father God, that you would just see pleasing in your sight, Father God. We ask, God, that we can just do so faithfully before you, Father, that yes. we can do so with your strength, Father God, with your joy, Father God, that we wouldn't just be people that are fasting and grumpy, Father God, yeah. that we'd be people full of joy in this time, that would be uh, leaning on your strength, Father God, be seeking your wisdom, God. Help us sharpen ourselves yes. in this season, God. Help us to prepare our year ahead, Father God. There's so much that we want to accomplish for your kingdom, Father God, and we pray that this is a year that we will see just so much breakthrough 
take place even personally. God, those prayers that we've been holding on to for years, Father God, we yes. pray that there would be a breakthrough yes, this God. year, Father God, yes, and Jesus. it would be a result of this fast, God, that you would find you you favor God. in your people through Thank this you, time, Father God, through the fasting in this, God, even corporately as we go through some of these prayers daily, Father God, that they wouldn't just be helpful prayer reminders, Father God, but that corporately as a body, we would come together as one voice, God, and declare, Father God, breakthroughs in these areas, God, to yes. see you move in yes. these areas, God. Yes. God, we're fasting corporately for you to move in these areas, Father God. So as we pray and we lift up some of these topics to you, Father God, would you hear the cries and the prayers of your people, Father God? Would they be an incense to you, Father God? And would they just move you to action, Father God? We're, we're not praying these things and, and that, that you had forgotten your promises. We're not praying these things that, uh, God, that you are a God that would forget them, Father God, but we're praying them to build our faith up, Father God, to remind ourselves of your goodness and what you have promised to do, Father God. So corporately, we seek you, Father, over these next 21 days, God, individually, that you would move, that you would strengthen us, Father God, and that we would draw nearer to you, Father God, than we were before these 21 days, Father God, that we would have a deeper relationship with you, that we'd hear your voice clearly, Father God, that we would know the shepherd's voice, Father. So we submit ourselves to you today, God. Prepare us to walk through this season, Father God. Help be with us, be near to us. And God, as we focus our attention on you, Father God, that you would just speak in a voice that we can hear, Father. So we love you and we thank you in your name. Amen. 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 And we love you guys. We can't wait to embark on this fasting journey with you. Uh, I'm going to pull a YouTube thing right now. And if this was helpful for you, <laughs> like the video. Let us know you. Uh, Subscribe. Hit the it, bell. It you like the, <laughs> hit the bell. Uh, we're gonna, this is kind of an experiment right now, so we're going to maybe do more videos like this. If you, if know, you like this stuff and you've watched this far, drop a comment drop below. A comment. Let us know. There we go. Keep That's it going. <laughs> All right. God bless. Love you all. Yeah.